Well, I am extremely excited today to be back with Daryl and Chris. It's been a long time, guys, since uh, <laughs> we've been together. The questions are piling up. We got work to do, but uh, but today, not only do we have something amazingly special uh, to introduce uh, to the people who are following our work, but we also get to uh, have a, a really nice young guy. We were, the three of us are just a bit older than you, Craig, and we noticed it by, uh, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm more than twice your age, and uh, it makes me feel good to uh, have that young blood here, but uh, Craig Apple is joining us because he has created something very special for those people who are using our work to do the planning for their financial future. Now, I wanna talk for just a second about the commitment that we have, the commitment that is in the mission statement that we developed back in 2012 when we started the foundation. And it is our commitment to providing information and tools to help people make, not only make better decisions, but to be able to apply those decisions to managing a portfolio. And that means knowledge and building the knowledge. That means having confidence in what you're building and that knowledge and confidence, I hope leads to the discipline that's necessary to be a successful long-term investor. And it makes it an interesting challenge that our work is meant for people, investors of all ages from birth. I mean, literally, we are giving advice for a newborn child. And obviously, we're not expecting them to jump up and do something about it. But we think a grandparent or a parent might. And all the way to people who are in the final years of their retirement. Now, I will tell you, having been an investment advisor for 30 years, I can tell you that doing what we are doing, this process of trying to educate people is way harder than being an investment advisor, working one-on-one -on -one with an investor. That is in many ways a piece of cake because you have maybe three, four, five, six hours with that individual finding out not only who they are, but their spouse and their family. It's a major commitment of time. And the beauty is, I mean, here we have Daryl Balls who has helped us create over what, 150 tables, I think now, Daryl. And, and, and we couldn't, as an advisor, I would never put those tables on the, uh, those tables on the desk and tell a, a prospective client, hey, look through these and see what you think. But in a sense, that's what we're left to do as educators. And that is to unload a ton of information, try our best to personalize it in conversation and in the hopes that it will be really something that would be appropriate for you. And certainly the work th that Chris has done with Two Funds for Life, that was a huge step forward in customizing. But it is way more difficult to customize when you're a teacher than it is to customize when you're an advisor. And then Craig comes along with something that is absolutely wonderful and that is a calculator that takes all those tables, not, well, not all of them, because the ones going back to 1970 uh, through 2020, all of those tables we have now can be put to use, not with some number that we made up starting with a million dollars at retirement or starting with nothing when you start investing or how much you're going to put in. We say you're going to put in $83.33. No, you want to put in $100 or $200. Well, here's what happens with this calculator that, that, that Craig has created. And that is your life in investing comes alive through these tables 
that we have been touting for years as being something you can use to broaden your, your, your knowledge of investing. It doesn't tell you what tomorrow is going to bring, but it gives you a much better idea than just guessing what the future is going to bring. And so I really uh, feel blessed to, to, to have this, this new calculator for the people who are following our work. I think not only will it help you, but you will know others who can use these, this calculator to improve their view of their financial future. So in this presentation, we're going to have a chance to hear directly from the developer, the inventor, the young man who put this together, Craig Apple. And Craig, first, I want to say thank you. It's amazing what you have done for our folks. And I must, I must add that part of what happened when Craig offered this to us and he said, it's a gift from me to the foundation. And I got to tell you, that, that, is, uh, that is huge, much appreciated. Now I know our folks want to learn about you. Can you take a few minutes, tell us about your background, and then tell us how this all happened. Great. Thank you, Paul. So hi, everyone. I'm Craig, and I am a technical program manager by training. Uh, I've been working uh, with Excel spreadsheets for probably 15 years, uh, developing different uh, tools for different uh, in different jobs, I guess, uh, across a, a broad spectrum of industries. I recently started a new job, and uh, for the first time in my life, I was able to save more than uh, what I had, I guess, than, than the maximum that I could save in my 401k, and I didn't know what to do uh, with the extra money. Uh, my entire life, I had been uh, kind of conditioned to believe that the stock market is gambling. And uh, I believe that up until you know, the beginning of this year, 2021. Then I went exploring. Uh, I went all over the internet. I dived as deep as I could to understand what investments are. And through a series of events, I ended up on the, the paulmerriman.com website dove deep into all the work and the content that was developed uh, by the foundation. I uh, read three of Paul's books, uh, got, actually got them from the library, uh, and read all of the, the, the free PDFs and a number of other things that uh, have been recommended in the podcasts over the years. So here I am in uh, February and March this year. I knew how much approximately I would be able to save uh, but I didn't know what to do with it. And I set a goal with my, uh, goal for myself to identify, uh, you know, by March 31st, have a strategy in place. And so as I happened and kind of dug into the Merriman Foundation work, I got into, uh, I got a plan and I understood a strategy, but I didn't know, you know, if I wanted to take the leap. And in order to do that, I needed some more information. Right. I had listened to the 2021 updates uh, that came out in February and March, and then I listened to the 2019 and 2018 ones that had, had been done every year, uh, and probably two years of podcasts, and of course opened up all the tables that are associated with that. I realized that, you know, seeing these uh, these great gains and these losses in percentages on the PDFs was fine, but I had no idea what it would be like to experience, you know, in particular losses of very, very large sums of money because I've never had very, very large sums of money. Uh, so I, I created an Excel spreadsheet and uh, I was able to input some variables and said, well, if I, you know, had $500,000 and there was a 40% decline in the market, what number actually would that be? And uh, so that I could try to prepare myself for that shock I haven't lived through it yet because I've, you know, I started my investing career in 2008, which it's been, you know, great bull market since then. But I, I want to prepare myself so that I can, you know, when it comes, not if, but when the market, you know, bear market comes, 
I can, I can be prepared and uh, stay the path that, that I've kind of set up for myself. So I had this little tool on my computer. Uh, I showed it to my sister. She thought it was great. And then I said, well, why don't I just email it to the foundation and see, you know, maybe they could use it or they could share it with, with others. Uh, that turned into a couple phone calls, and we realized that Excel might be a limiting factor. And so in April and May, I converted the cell Excel spreadsheet into an online dashboard. Uh, I had to learn a, a tool called Tableau uh, so that I could implement the idea, but make it available on a web page so that anyone could use it without having to have the Excel downloaded to their computer. Well, that's a great start. That's a great start. Now, tell us, would you please? In fact, I guess I, guess I should look to Daryl and Chris. Did that introduction raise any questions from you guys about where this, uh, what this young fellow has done? <laughs> I, I, I'm just delighted that somebody stepped up and volunteered and Craig, that you, you know, you took initiative and offered to help. I think it's awesome. And the Tableau tool is really cool. And I, uh, you know, I think you said early on when we were working together that you had taken a look at Portfolio Visualizer, because I refer a lot of people to Portfolio Visualizer, and you said that it was overly complicated or, or that you kind of had trouble understanding it and you were looking for something simpler. So I, I think that what you've created here is more in the language and the vernacular of what Paul's listeners are familiar with and is easier to use. And uh, so I, I just I, I think it's awesome and I'm really grateful and I'm just sitting here wondering if there's anybody else out there who has great ideas who might be able to do good things for the foundation. If so, I hope they're encouraged by what they see you do here and by how much it's appreciated. Yes. Yeah, I have to say that when you think about, I don't know, 150 some odd tables, Paul said, and really the tool allows you to explore all of them. Um, it talks about, it, you can look at the, and you'll, Craig will show you this, but, but it allows the fine tuning, fine tuning tables and the distribution tables and the accumulation tables to all kind of come alive to where you can, you can put your scenario in and you can compare them across the different strategies with your unique numbers. And, <clears throat> excuse me, I think, I think this is so great because this is, this goes to the heart, I think, of what Paul's foundation is, is intended to do, and that is to help educate investors so that they can, they can know what, what kinds of results they might be able to achieve um, using their particular scenarios. You can look at all the different strategies and apply you know, Paul's uh, principles about investing early and broadly, broad, broadly diversifying your portfolio to help you craft a plan to to meet your goals and and see see what what might be able to 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 come from that the other thing too that i think is is fortunate or not fortunate it's great about the way uh craig has put this together is it, uh, and he'll show you this but it also allows you to explore the role of luck in mm -hmm. achieving your financial goals and uh and i think that's an important factor to understand that that even the best laid financial plan can come a cropper um, when the market decides it wants to do something different than what you want. And so uh, it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. That's great, Daryl and Chris, very appreciate it. So why don't you uh, put this calculator uh, to work for us, Craig, and, and, uh, and let's, let's make it dance, okay? All right. And before we do that, I wanted to say thank you to all of you. Uh, you know, I was just a, a person tinkering with a spreadsheet on my computer and through the engagement, you know, uh, this is, I have the ability to contribute and to be present here in these videos and try to, you know, help the found foundations work. So thank you for uh, recognizing the idea and then being great partners in developing it over these past few months. You're welcome. Our pleasure. Absolutely. So I'm going to go ahead and start sharing my screen. All right. And could you just confirm that you're able to see it? Yep. 
Yep. And so this is the home page of the lifetime investment calculator. Uh, so the official name is the Merriman Foundation Lifetime Investment Calculator. <laughs> this page provides an overview of the calculator. It pr presents the calculator so you can use it within this page. It provides a description of each of the parameters or the that you can use to adjust on the right hand side, and it includes frequently asked questions. We're we're looking at the calculator here right now, and this calculator is built off of the percentages in the fine tuning tables. So if you go to the palmerryman.com website under best advice, and then you click fine tuning your asset allocation, there are two PDFs that are out there. Uh, and the calculator is based off of these PDFs. So I'll click on the fine tuning tables 5050 2021 update. And you'll see the, we have a representation of a 50% US and 50% international allocation uh, for the S&P 500 equity portfolio, ultimate buy and hold, worldwide equity portfolio, for fund, et cetera. And there are table numbers here on the left-hand side. So I'm hinting uh, or foreshadowing that, uh, that you can link what you've worked with for years uh, to what you're experiencing in the calculator. All right, shifting back to the calculator, I'm going to hit full screen in the bottom right-hand corner. And the goal of this part of the call is to provide an introduction on how the calculator functions, uh, how, you know, what it means, what each of the fields mean, what each of the parameters on the right-hand side mean, so that you can get it, have an introduction to the, uh, the basic functions. We have another video that we've already recorded that does a deep dive uh, and presents a couple of scenarios. And we are working on developing individual scenarios for the calculator so that you have short, maybe uh, 10 to 15 minute videos that you can view uh, for specific, uh, I guess, interests. Like, uh, how would you, do you have enough money for retirement? How would investments for a young child grow over time, uh, et cetera? So I always like to work with full screen because it provides the, the best layout and, and the most uh, information. I, I know that these numbers can be overwhelming. I, I assume that the audience is familiar with, uh, with many numbers uh, as, as you've been listening over the years. On the right-hand side, these are all the parameters that you can toggle. And so adjustments on this right-hand side will have an impact in the main view. In the main view, in the top left-hand corner, we present a year in order. We present the sequence of returns, and you're able to adjust this so that you can, uh, you can model how your scenario would have played out at different starting years. We have a contribution amount, uh, which you can, you can define uh, in the parameters. And then we have a number of columns on the fixed income and equity allocation. Starting by default, we have a 40% stock, 60% bonds, 60% stocks and 40% bonds, 100% stocks, 0% bonds. And then uh, because the S&P 500, 500 index has always been the baseline, uh, we present what, what it would be doing in that year. Each of these equity and fixed income allocations have three columns in this growth chart. There are two main settings on the chart. One is for growth and one is for distribution. And you can toggle that on the right-hand side in the distribution parameter. When you're looking at the growth chart, this shows how the, uh, the allocation or the, the portfolio grows year over year. It presents the dollar return and the percent return for each year in your uh, in your sequence of returns. So you can see that it, you know, you have a starting value and then the, uh, you're able to contribute to that uh, at the beginning of the year. And then that will grow throughout the year and then you achieve your end of year balance. So that's the growth chart. On the right hand side, I'm gonna start at the top uh, parameter and I'm going to describe each of them from top to bottom. 
The first parameter is called strategy. And this parameter displays those, uh, which, which of the foundation strategy you want to calculate against. The first strategy, and you'll see the numbers here on the left refer to the fine tuning tables, is the S&P 500. And I've come up with a bit of a shorthand for these strategies, but uh, table four is the ultimate buy and hold worldwide uh, follow with, for a 50% US and 50% international allocation. 4B is uh, ultimate buy and hold worldwide strategy with a 70% US and 30% international allocation. I, we, I've added all of the tables here that are represented in the 2021 update. So you're able to, to evaluate the four fund US, four fund worldwide, 50-50 and 70-30 allocation, uh, the all value worldwide, 50-50, 70-30 allocation, all small cap value worldwide, and then all small cap value US. And as you flip through each of these strategies, the, the main window updates automatically based off of the percentage returns uh, in those equity and fixed income allocations uh, columns. Speaking of those columns, you're able to adjust them. We have the ability to view all, um, I guess, 10% increments from 0% stocks to 100% stocks. In order to do that, you adjust the equity and fixed income allocation parameter on the right-hand side, and you can show as much information as you want, or you can show as little as you want. And as soon as I've just removed, for example, the 40% stock allocation, and it's removed it from here in the left-hand side. We have a toggle to, to display the values in nominal or real terms. The nominal term uh, will show the dollar value that would have been in your bank account uh, at that time. And the real return strips out the inflation and it shows the value relative to the first year in the sequence of returns. So what are the sequence of returns? We have 51 years of data from 1970 to 2021. And in, that's one of an unlimited number of, I guess an unlimited number of sequence of returns. And this calculator allows you to start at any of the 51 years for which we have data so that you could see, as Daryl said earlier, whether or not you were lucky in a given year. So you could adjust, for example, the, uh, the calculator in a situation where you're displaying you know, a, a decade of great returns, or you could adjust it so that your first sequence year is, uh, is a dismal a bear market. That, uh, that you've just you know, retired into, for example. So you, you can adjust this, uh, any value currently between 1970 and 2020, and it'll adjust, or for example, to change this to 1980, it'll adjust and begin the sequence of returns at 1980. Uh, I wanted to show that once we hit 2020, we loop back through to 1970. And we do this purposefully so that we could uh, allow people to, to view up to 200 years of returns so that they could model uh, you know, uh, five or so generations uh, and how an investment by one could have cascading impacts throughout multiple lifetimes. Uh, I, I chose 200 years actually because uh, Ben Franklin had uh, bequeathed uh, a 200 year bond or, uh, to the cities of Philadelphia and Boston. And I thought, well, you know, if it's good enough for, for him, why don't we put it into our calculator? Because I, you know, I'm sure he couldn't have imagined what that two, you know, what, what that investment had done over 200 years. And you can see uh, if you change the duration to 200 years, the numbers get very, very, very large. Uh, By the as way, you scroll to the bottom. By the way, Craig, I, I, I might mention, I think it just recently ran out of money, that 200-year trust, if I recall. <laughs> it, it, uh, yeah, they spent it. <laughs> that, that's exactly right. So I've just adjusted the duration, and I've changed it. The default is 51 years, so that you can see the, uh, the data that we have. But I wanted to show you know, that you can the maximum value in the duration is 200 years. 
the starting value is the value with which you begin the, uh, the calculation. You can start at $0, or you can start with whatever you have in your bank account right now, or you know, the bank account uh, that your child has, for example. This number can be anything. The next four fields are, have to deal with contributions over here on the left-hand side. So when you adjust these, you can define the first contribution year. So in some circumstances, you have a starting value, but you don't have enough money right now to be able to contribute. Maybe in five years, you'd be able to contribute. So you just adjust the first contribution year and it'll, it'll adjust and start that contribution in the year that you define. I just defined year five and the contribution began at year five. You can define the duration of contributions. Uh, you'll see this in play, but it, it's the total number of contributions that you, that you want to uh, calculate. It's, the default is 20 years, and you can adjust it to any number uh, between one and uh, the end of the duration. The contribution amount per year is how much you wish to contribute. So uh, the default value is $6,000 uh, because that's the standard amount that can be added to an IRA. You can contribute $0 and it'll show you know, no contributions uh, in, your, in your chart. And then the final uh, in the contribution section is whether or not you choose to scale that contribution with inflation. So this field is yes or, is yes or no. And if, oh, forgive me, I have to add a contribution to show that it's gonna scale. Uh, so I've just changed the contribution amount per year to $1,000. And if you choose to scale it with inflation, then every year it'll take that uh, prior year's inflation and it'll multiply that by the value of the contribution the previous year. So in the first year, when you contribute $1,000, uh, it calculates the inflation. And then the next year you're contributing $1,039 in the view that we're looking at right now. Of course, that changes based on the, in the beginning of your sequence of returns. I also wanted to note that this field uh, adjusts, it impacts the fixed distribution scenario. You're able to use this calculator to um, evaluate distributions in the other setting. And if you have scaling contribution or withdrawal with inflation, then it'll actually scale your withdrawal as well in the distribution scenario. The last four fields have to deal with the distribution. Uh, we have the distribution, first distribution year, distribution duration, and distribution percent. In order to show the growth chart, so you know we're just showing how the money grows over time, we have the distribution set to don't calculate. So if, it's, if distribution is don't calculate, then the remaining three fields, first distribution year, distribution duration, and distribution percent don't matter. But if you choose one of the distribution scenarios, we have fixed or flexible, then it'll adjust, I've just clicked on fixed, it'll adjust the columns for each of the equity and fixed income allocations to show you the dis distribution and the cumulative distribution based off of the values that you set in the last three fields, first distribution year, distribution duration, and distribution percent. But before I get into that, I wanted to kind of open up uh, you know, the growth portion of the call uh, and see if uh, Paul, Chris, or Daryl, if you had any comments at this point. I, I have two, two things um, that I think are worthwhile pointing out or, or maybe just drawing a little more attention to. One is that I think it's fantastic you give uh, people the option to look at the nominal and the real results because I, you know, in the table work that Daryl does, uh, we show nominal uh, and, and we do that partly as a simplification, but partly because that's an apples to apples comparison of what people are likely to see in the industry when, you know, they, they talk to uh, advisors or other, other people about the potential investments they're going to go into. The nominal results are what are usually talked about. But the real result, the result after the effects of inflation is what you get to spend. If you wanna understand what your retirement 30 years from now is really going to buy, I think the real results are powerful. So I think it's fantastic that you've done that. And then the other thing is, um, 
for a variety of reasons, you're working off of annual data here. Your returns are annual instead of monthly. So uh, that means that you miss some of the fine grained ups and downs, maybe that would show up in, in some of the statistics that are in uh, Daryl's tables. Specifically, I think drawdowns won't be quite as deep, but uh, it's still a, you know, it's still a, a great uh, tool in terms of approximating what somebody's experience is gonna be like. And to the extent that they only look once a year, which they shouldn't be looking all that often anyway, um, it's it's very representative of the kind of experience that they're going to see down the road. So um, those are just the few things that popped to mind for me. Daryl, did you have anything that stood out so far? Yeah, I I, I did. Um, the your comment on uh, the second uh, part about the the real versus nominal is um, is is a good point. Um, I think it's sometimes easy to get lost in the large numbers. Um, the other thing that I would like to point out is that the column that is labeled percent return is, is maybe more properly referred to as percent growth because mm -hmm. it includes not only the return due to the investment, but it also includes the, the additional growth in the portfolio due to the contributions or, the, mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. potentially reduction due to the distributions. And I, and I also, I, I, I think it's important to note that this is a compound rate of return. There are, are people in this industry, uh, professionals supposedly, who will talk about the average rate of return and the expectations of a much higher rate of return than they're likely to actually get. This gives you the real number, both at the nominal and the real uh, rates of return rather than some magic number that would make somebody buy a product they shouldn't. And I have to say, I spoke with Daryl yesterday and I didn't quite understand the difference. I thought that I had a good number that I was targeting for financial independence, but then I quickly realized that that might be 15 years away. And that number isn't the number that I should be targeting. I should be targeting much, much more than that. Uh -oh. <laughs> so, that, so you so you benefited from this whole real nominal thing <laughs> absolutely because excellent excellent forty thousand dollars today will not buy forty forty thousand dollars worth of stuff in 15 years yeah right yeah right so i'll go back and uh i'll reset the the table to do that you can you just need to exit uh so i've i've clicked the uh the full screen button in the bottom right hand corner and refresh the page. I wanted to note, of course, that if you happen to make a, if you happen to make a mistake and refresh the page, then everything of course will be erased. Uh, and so it's, it's a good idea to kind of keep track of what your, you know, your, your chain of thought as you move through uh, working with the tool. <clears throat> in this portion, I'm gonna describe the distributions. So we've been through each of the parameters on the right hand side, except for the distributions. I've reset the view to the default, uh, again, showing 40% stocks, 60% stocks, 100% stock. Uh, that's, those are your ex, uh, equity fixed income allocations. And when I change this, I have two options in the distribution. One is the fixed distribution, which is a percent of the starting value. So if you were to, for example, choose 4% of the starting value, the distribution will look at your first distribution year so that's one of the parameters. And what I'm displaying here is a growth chart that's uh, in year 21. It's going to start the first distribution. And so the fixed strategy looks at the distribution percent that you set, set in the parameter. It calculates that percentage from the, the end of year balance from the previous year. So what I'm displaying on the screen, I'm looking at the 60% stock, 40% bond allocation. I'm tracking down the, the column to the 21st year. Mm -hmm. And the calculation is taking 4% of $1.8 million. And that distribution that first year is $75,000. This is in the fixed strategy. Uh, and remember earlier I said that we can scale the contributions and withdrawals with inflation. I have that toggled to no right now. And what it's showing is it's showing that $75,000 pulled out each year in the distribution column. It shows the end of year balance. 
and it shows the cumulative distribution. This number, uh, we assume that the distribution gets pulled out at the beginning of the year on the first day of the year, and the remaining balance uh, grows uh, for the remainder of the year based off of this, the return in that, in that year. Of course, you can always flip, flip back and forth between the nominal and real. Uh, it'll calculate that as well. So we have three options here, the first distribution year, the distribution duration, and the distribution percent. You can adjust the distribution percent to whatever you want. Uh, it can be, well, as long as it's less than 100% and greater than zero. <laughs> but if you wanted to, to adjust it to a conservative 3%, then you could just type 3.0. And instead of $75,000 that first year, it'll pull out $56,000. Well, maybe you want a little more. So you could adjust it to 3.5%, for example, and it'll pull out $65,000 that first year. In extreme cases, you know, you could pull out 7% and you could see how that, uh, that has an impact on your portfolio. I'm gonna toggle back on the scaling, the contribution, and withdrawal with inflation. And it grows, your distribution now grows uh, because you've chosen the fixed distribution method. It grows with the, the inflation of that given sequence year that's displayed on the left-hand side. So in year 22, 1991, in this 60% stock, 40% bond allocation, uh, it grew from your distribution grew from $155,000 to $164,000 that year. So that's how the fixed distribution stra uh, strategy works. And, uh, and it shows how the withdrawal, uh, with the, the scaling the contribution or withdrawal with inflation has an impact on what you pull out each year. The second option on the distribution parameter is the flexible option. And so this pulls out a percent of the portfolio uh, value every year. So each year, the, it looks at the previous year's portfolio value, and it pulls out the percent that you've defined. So I've, I have a distribution percent of seven, uh, distribution of 7% right now. And in the 22nd year, it's pulling out $135,000. When in the 21st year, it pulled out $155,000. And that's because the market dropped that year in the sequence of returns in 1990. At the end of year of 1989 in this sequence, you had $2.2 million and it pulled out 7% of that. At the end of the 21st year in the sequence year of 1990, you had $1.9 million. So it pulled out 7% of that. And you effectively had $20,000 less that year than you did the previous year. I wanted to jump into a couple of scenarios after this. Uh, but I wanted to see uh, Paul, Daryl, Chris, have, have, you, have you any comments here? Yeah, these are nominal values, right? That's right. Yep. What happens when you click real? Yep. So when you click real, the first distribution year drops from $155,000 to $64,000. And so these are in real terms relative to the first sequence year of your return. So this is sixty-four thousand uh, dollars based off of the purchasing power in nineteen seventy. I guess it's interesting to note that you know this is a very aggress aggressive distribution strategy of seven percent, and um, although the and it is a flexible distribution, right? So you're, you're, the amount of money you're taking out in terms of its total purchasing power is staying relatively constant, it goes down a little bit towards the end, um, and the portfolio is surviving. So I would, I, I would say this is a lucky time frame, probably. Yeah. Um, so I, I don't know when an unlucky time frame would be, but that goes to show that you kind of need to probably exercise your start year as you use this tool as well, right? To try yeah, and figure change, out. Change the sequence year to start in 1980. All right, so I'll, I'll flip back to nominal. No, 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 leave it, the, well, okay. And then the first sequence year will be 1980. Yeah, that'll put retirement in 2000. Okay, and 
in the default values here, we have from 1980 to 1999, year one through 20, uh, as uh, years of accumulation. I'm going to actually remove that and have the first distribution year start at year one. And to do that, I uh, adjust the contribution down to zero. So the contribution amount per year, I set to zero. And then the first distribution year, I set to year one. And now you'll see that uh, as we move it up, the, um, the, the table readjusts. And you can see effectively that this person runs out of money by, by year 30 uh, or 31. Yeah, so I, I, I think this is a really uh, interesting and useful experience for people to try, right? To iterate and try different start years and see, see what works and what doesn't and how long it lasts and how bumpy the ride is. And yeah, that's cool. So, so um, I, I know there are people who are watching this and immediately creating a wish list, <laughs> uh, a monthly information, quarterly information. I mean, it, um, I, I can imagine it gets quite long. How are you going to handle that, Craig, the, the wish list that, uh, uh, that people generate? Yep. So the idea is that we would kind of get together as a community and figure out what uh, what features are most commonly requested. So uh, feel free to email me. I've got an email address now, craig at paulmerriman.com. And I'll gather all that information and work with the team here to identify the best features that are uh, that would add the most value for the most number of people. That's wonderful. You are an experienced program manager, aren't you? <laughs> uh, let's say I've been around the block. <laughs> yep, I can tell. Uh, I wanted to note here, uh, actually, this person didn't run out of money. I've, I just stopped the distribution duration. So since we're looking at it, I, I, I set the distribution duration at 31 years. Uh, so this would be, in fact, the, the amount of money that this person would leave to their heirs instead of running out of money. So, Craig, I have a question for you. Uh, you know, you you started down this path because you had some questions of your own and i know that we've uh you know we've given you a lot of feedback that led to a lot of refinement and change and iteration but has this been useful to you in answering any of your own investment questions and if so which ones yep so i had two big scenarios that i was interested in uh most importantly you know paul had recommended a defensive strategy and he, he's always said be ready for the downturns. And I had no idea what I could experience. Uh, so as I, as I looked at some of these, these numbers, it helped me identify the maximum withdrawal and for how long. So for example, in the year 2000, uh, there were a few bear markets in the S&P 500. If I had $8 million is what we have displayed here at the default, uh, you know, over a couple of years, you go from a $9 million high down to $6 million, losing $3 million in three years if you were solely in the S&P 500. Almost so, four. Right, right. And so I, um, I have no idea what that feels like, but I, um, I wanted to prepare myself. If I could somehow get there one day, uh, I wanted to prepare myself to see and experience and see the, the impact that that would have on my life. I and what happened uh, if you simply changed from the S&P 500, stayed all U.S., but you went to the four fund U.S.? Did that help? Yeah, you can see uh, because I have the, the default strategy set to four fund U.S. and I'm displaying the 100% S&P 500 index, mm. you can actually do an apples to apples comparison. So in the year 2000, in the sequence of returns, the S&P 500 lost 9% but the four fund US strategy gained 4.1% in, in a 100% stock uh, allocation. The worst year uh, of those three was a 22% loss in the S&P 500 and only a 16% loss in the, uh, in the four fund US. And then the bounce back of course is huge. Uh, S&P 500 gaining 28% in the year 2004, but the four fund US poly, uh, strategy gained 43% in that bounce back. Great, great stuff.
Yeah, it no, really it shows does. off the benefits of diversification. It, yeah. it, you know, it shows that you get less downturn and uh, better long-term growth by having, you know, the broader set of asset classes represented in the portfolio. That's cool. And to further that, to further that point, uh, your fixed income and equity allocation is another kind of way of smoothing out the ride. Mm -hmm. uh, as I, as Daryl said yesterday to me. Uh, so in that same year, uh, in 2002, if you were 60% stocks, you only lost 5.4% instead of 163 uh, in this four fund US strategy. Uh, and the returns aren't as, aren't as great, but the ride is much smoother where you have in this case, one losing year of the three and, and that losing year was only 5% instead of 16% of your portfolio. And, you know, I never thought about this, but this could be a great tool for a parent to use working with a, a, a young adult child and getting them started in this process to be able to show them what this ride could be like and why it's so important to get started early rather than sp spending all your money for good things short term. It could be very impactful. That's exactly right. And so that brings me to the second point. I have a, a son who I decided to start investing uh, for. I've been saving for his college for years, uh, actually since he was born, but I'd never thought about retirement. And uh, with the, the foundation's articles on you know, saving from birth, uh, at, he's 10 years old at this, uh, at, as of today. Um, oh. And he, and so I'm 10 years late, I guess, in that scenario, <laughs> but I, I took, uh, I took a portion of his college savings and purposefully uh, put it into an all small cap value portfolio, because I realized that he could, uh, well, based off of the work of the foundation and toggling through and seeing the different uh, portfolios, I realized that he could withstand the volatility and the, you know, the great risk and the great reward of small cap value from age 10 until age 50 or so. And if or when we get to that, um, that milestone, I'll help coach him through the glide path process so that we can get out of that and, uh, and <laughs> allocate it appropriately. That's great. So those are the two, uh, those are the two big uh, things, how the foundations work and this calculator, the original Excel spreadsheet helped me understand where I wanted to invest and which strategy I, I wanted to personally use for me and for my son. Very cool. So that's the introduction. Uh, I Great. thought it would, it would be useful to go through a scenario of a 22 year old who's just graduated, I'm sorry, a 25 year old who is working and they would like to save uh, in their retirement about $3,000 per year, and then show the, the distributions of this person's lifetime. Fine with me. Anybody got something they want to do? I'm having fun. I don't know about you. Oh. <laughs> so I've just uh, reset the dashboard and you see, I do it liberally, right? Cause it doesn't, it's easy. You just hit the refresh button on the page and you go back to the, to all the default values. So the scenario is we have a 25 year old. Uh, the starting year is 1970 because that's an uh, easy default. So year one here is year is the 25th, you know, the 25th year of this person's age. Year 15 would be 40, right? And year 35 would be 60. So I wanted to see in how this person, if they invested $3,000 per year adjusting for inflation in a risky portfolio of 100% stocks, how that would grow over this period. So to do that, uh, my first sequence year is 1970, as I said, I'm going to remove the fixed income and equity allocations. So I'm just unchecking the boxes in the equity and fixed income allocation parameter. And now I only have one column here showing 100% stocks. The starting value for this person is zero. They have no money saved right now at age 25. The first contribution year is year one, and they're gonna contribute for 35 years from age uh, 25 to age 60. The contribution amount per year is gonna be $3,000 that first year when they're 25, and we're gonna scale it with inflation. So that ultimately 
uh, over the 35-year the period, they have, uh, they're contributing 13,928 in the 35th year uh, before they retire. So as we can, we can see the returns year over year, and it is uh, at the end of the 35th year, when they turn age 60, they have $4.9 million in this scenario. Uh, you can see that they've had some losses uh, at, you know, along the sequence of returns. Early on, they were contributing $3,000 per year. They only had $11,000 in their account and they lost, uh, including the contributions, $3,000 in the sequence of return year 1973 and 74. So their portfolio in year three, which is 1972 was $11,000 after three years of contributions. And then it stayed stagnant, even though they continued to contribute $3,000 for those two years. Uh, so this is a pretty, this is a pretty good lesson uh, that's common because you can see you know, if I was a, an individual with this strategy and the, num the numbers weren't moving and I was still putting in $3,000 each year, you can see uh, how discouraging that would be so early on in, in the investment life cycle. Yeah, but, you know, Paul has made the point many, many times that the right way to look at that, it's not easy, but the right way to look at that is, man, I'm buying this stuff on the cheap. And to think of it as more of a slingshot um, you know, and if you can have that perspective in that moment, um, just look what happens in the few years following that 11, 11, and then you're 23, 39, 47, 59, right? So it really is like a slingshot. It's like there's a, a, a tension in the spring being built up and then it releases and you really go somewhere. Yep. And so you can see the subsequent returns are huge, 69%, yeah. 51%, et cetera. Yeah, that's cool. So this, uh, another piece here that's important is you can smooth out the ride. This person is in 100% stocks. Uh, and if you were to add the 80% stock allocation, I know that, that, uh, that this person is young and they can take a great deal of risk uh, for many years from age 25 until age 50 or 45, um, you could see how they compare. So your bottom number at age 60, you had 4.9 million in that 100% stock allocation versus 3.8 if you were to have, uh, if you were to have invested at 80% stocks and 20%. The ride is a bit smoother. Uh, as you look through the years and you track, the losses aren't as great in the losing years. Uh, but of course, the return, the return isn't as great. Uh, but it's, it's nice to be able to compare apples to apples uh, in the same, within the same strategy. And I think for some people who are in a target date fund, they might be, and I'm not asking you to do this, but those target date funds are sitting in 10% fixed income uh, for those first 15 years. And uh, you'll be able to see how much less money you would have because of, of that meaningless um, risk adjuster that that 10 percent I mean that does not protect you from much but it does cost you something and you would see how much that is exactly so I'm going to uh, shift over to distributions right now at age 60 this person has let's say that they were 80 percent stocks and 20 percent bonds for the entire uh, for the entire period they had $3.8 million at age 60. So I'm going to rerun this scenario with that as the starting value, except somehow that year when they turned 60 or 61, they decided to flip, to, to adjust their equity and fixed income allocation to 60%. So I'm going to use the starting value of $3,863,822. And I'm going to use that modeling it against the 60% stock portfolio with the, with the idea that they would be able to maintain that uh, through their, uh, through their, their 35 year distribution uh, uh, cycle. So I'll just go ahead and adjust the parameters here on the right-hand side. And I didn't write this number down, but it's probably a good idea 
to do that because as soon as you adjust one of these things on the right, it, uh, it will, that number will disappear. So I'm just in my notepad here, writing down 3863, 822. All right. On the right hand side, uh, oh, it's also important. There are two other things I need to write down. The first, se the, the sequence year. So we're in the 2004 sequence year and we're not gonna contribute anymore from that, from that time. Uh, so we don't need to, to write down the contribution. So the first sequence year is 2004, okay? We're gonna keep the duration of 51 years. The starting value is that number that I wrote down, 3,863,822. We're gonna zero out our contributions and we are going to adjust the first distribution year to year one because this person is age 60. And we're gonna have them distribute for 35 years at 4%. So shift now I'm toggling the distribution from don't calculate because I wanna show the distribution chart and I'm gonna show a fixed percent. So in 2004, they started their distribution. Oh, and I've got to do two more things. I need to remove the 80% and 100% stock allocation and drop it down to 60% because that's what we had, we had said uh, was this person's intention as of age 60. So in their first year in 2004, they distributed $154,000, which is 4% of the $3.8 million that was the starting value. And you can see how that continues to grow and the portfolio uh, grows. Ultimately, after a 30, 30 year period in this fixed distribution strategy scaled with inflation uh, and using the, the four fund US strategy, they've pulled $10 million out of the portfolio over the years. And they have a remaining $26 million, uh, actually $31 million after, on the 36th year that they would be leaving to their heirs. Pointing to the wrong one because this is the problem with the end of the year balance, right? The, the end of the, what gets left to your heirs is the 26,559 because that's the end of your last year, right? right. Not the okay. 37 or whatever it was, the next one down, yeah. Well, let's say it took them a year to get over your, uh, your passing. <laughs> Yeah, and they just kind of left it alone, you know, and then it was probate. It took that long to get through probate. Right, right. It continued like to that. grow. Yeah. i uh, leave that in. That's great. Uh, well, it is, uh, it, it's amazing work, Craig. And uh, uh, I, I think that we're going to get loads of feedback. You're obviously, uh, having given your your email address, you're, you're going to get uh, probably a lot of comments. And I suspect people will even take the time to say thank you because it is a very uh, generous contribution to their financial education, I think. And you guys have anything uh, that, uh, oh, well, I guess we should mention, you have actually have recorded, as you did mention, the 45 minute piece, uh, but you've also recorded a handful of scenarios that people can uh, uh, might be attracted to in their own situation. So that's right. So any I'll, parting comments from anybody? Well, I've got one more. Oh, yeah. you do? Oh, <laughs> hey, bring it, it on, on. Bring it on. <laughs> it's, it's the encore. How about that? Ah, the encore. <laughs> yes. So I've, I've reset the graph and I reset the calculator. And, uh, you know, that, that article that said, if you, if you save $365 a year for your child, uh, for 18 years, it can turn into millions of dollars, right? That had a great impact on my, um, on my decision to move money from the, from my, my son's college fund, uh, over to his, over to a risky, um, a risky small, all small cap value fund. And so I wanted to just model, show, show what would have happened uh, if someone would, would have done this. Uh, in, you know, as I said, they can take unlimited risks. So I'm gonna shift the strategy to all small cap value, adjust the equity and income uh, allocation, ex equity and fixed income allocation to hundred percent. And we'll stick with the 1971st sequence year. Uh, or let's say that, 
uh, I won't use the year for my son, but I'll use a ballpark. Let's say the person was born in, in 2005 uh, and they have a 70 year duration. Starting value is going to be zero. First contribution year is year one. We're gonna contribute for 18 years until their 18th birthday. And we're gonna contribute $365 per year. We're not gonna scale that with inflation, right? A dollar a day. So in, this was really the inspiring thing for me, right? So we've just, uh, you know, we have 18 years of contributions of $365. And by the time he hits 60, it's up to 5 million in nominal terms. I'll switch that over to real. And that would be seven, uh, forgive me, $837,000. Of course, uh, this is looped through the scenario, but you know, $837,000 in real terms. And then as it continues to grow until he turns age, age 70, flipping back to nominal, you know, we're at $9 million. And so you can see how time and market is critical uh, for the success of, um, of these, these small dollar values growing uh, so, so large. It also shows the power of investing early. Mm -hmm. even, even a little bit early is incredible. Yeah. If you, That's have, great. if you have the time, if you have the time. All right, so I'll stop sharing my screen so that we can see the faces. <laughs> Well, they're happy faces. I can tell you that, <laughs> Craig. There, that, that's uh, that's great work, and uh, uh, this is going to go out into the hands of uh, we've got thirty thousand plus people in our newsletter now, and uh, we'll be able to build an article at Market Watch around this. Uh, I recently actually talked to the people at Market Watch to make sure that we would be able to link to this new calculator and uh, they agreed that that would be possible. So uh, I'm, I'm very excited about that. Thank you very much. And, and uh, I know that uh, Daryl and Chris have been working with you to uh, add all of their experience. And, and I know from my experience with them, their experience has been really helpful to me and I hope it's been helpful to you. So, uh, I, I, again, our appreciation, we are going to do the best that we can uh, with what you've worked so hard to, to, to put together. And, uh, and unless you gentlemen have some final point you'd like to make, an exclamation, no, no exclamations. Well, then it's just thank you. By the way, thanks to all of you who are kind enough to spend what is probably a relatively major part of your life uh, with the foundation work. We hope it helps. Let us know. We're always interested in how our work is helping you have either more peace of mind or a better return, or how about that? More money, less, less, less worry. That's what we're looking for. Thanks as always.